Hello, this is Paul Roberts of Conscious Counseling 101. And today I'd like to tackle really hard questions. When I go to tackle the hardest questions, I really have to use a point of view of a biblical reference that is beyond what people can just do as they're running around in this crazy world trying to come up with all kinds of answers. Because if there's a greater thing than us, the answers must lie there. And if there isn't, then the answer to the question is irrelevant because you could just say whatever you want and it'd be the right answer, right? So I'm going to assume there's a greater thing. I want to have faith there's a greater thing, but it's only going to be faith. I can't tell you what I'm going to tell you is the truth, but I'm going to talk to the hard questions. I'm going to answer the hard questions. If you believe that there's no eternal, there's no moral code, there's no God, there's no Jesus, there's no greater understanding that man can come to, then just do what you want to do. Figure out what your ramifications are going to be and say, well, what can I live with? What can I not? But this is if you believe there's more. That's what this video is for. But you say, well, what are the hard questions? What are the answers to them? When you get past the Gospels and you go into some of the things that the first disciples were doing to try to further the cause of Jesus and try to teach that, you've got to remember that they were coming from a place where most of the people that were Jewish, Jesus came for. Later, when they did not receive Others were allowed to have that, and the Holy Spirit were given to all that would believe and come. But some of the disciples, people that taught after Jesus, said about the question of whether a man should marry or not, it would be better for a man not to marry, is what they said, because his heart could be more devoted, his mind could be more devoted to the teachings and the studies of the Lord. We know not to put anything before our God, but that doesn't mean that we have to pin ourselves back in order to like get further along and find value in the teaching. Now, how much value do you put in Jesus' teachings? And how much value do you put in some of those that were with him that continued to teach for him? Let what they say suggest, and then you go to the teachings, and the living word will show you. I'm going to say the same thing today. Go to the teachings. So they said it's better for man not to marry so that his heart and his mind would be in God. His heart and mind would be more in line and keeping with what finding the truth of what the Creator wanted for him through Jesus' teachings. Let's talk about abortion. Let's talk about ending the potential life before it's even given fully. We don't know. We don't know when it's given. We're not going to debate that. What does the scripture talk about? About these hard to deal with things. Obviously, we've already mentioned putting God first is the most important thing. But when God talked about his people, which were not us, but they were the chosen people at the time, he talked about God knows every hair on your head before you're even born. One of the things that was mentioned was somebody was fathoming, surmising, why couldn't a creator create a pot? And say, I'm not happy with that pot and smash it. It's up to the creator to decide whether or not that which he creates is good. But we know in Genesis that he said it was good. Then we know there was a fall, but man was still given the opportunity for redemption. This has been held out all the days of man's time on this earth, including with Jesus. So therefore, redemption is always allowed. The idea of fathoming that pot could be breakable was just an exercise, a mental exercise. Because if redemption is allowed, and grace, and no predestination, but literally, can you knock on the door and the door be answered, then as long as that's allowed, that fathoming of the pot is breakable by the Creator, and that pot is worthless, isn't a concept that we need to be concerned about. Because as long as that door is there and it can be opened, we have the chance to knock and see and follow. So it's very important to realize we're not those that they said God knows every hair on your head. We're not the chosen people, but we still have that same chance of redemption. As long as we have that, we are valuable. We are like the lost sheep that the shepherd goes to the nth degree to find, even leaving the flock alone for a while. We are like that. We're given that opportunity. Abortion is the baby like that. Nobody knows, and nobody ever will know. Just like you don't know there's a God, you don't know there's a Jesus, you don't know there's a heaven, you don't know there's a hell, you don't know anything. This is all faith-based. When you try to lock it down with laws and strong fixed principles, you then have a potential to be completely wrong, the opposite direction of what it should be. All Jesus' teachings were about flexibility and living and perspective and comparing this world with the next. In order to answer a question like that, you have to be emboldened by following his teachings, already knocking, already having the door answered, already have the Holy Spirit and the Word send that message to you. If we were to tell you what you needed to do, we'd be 
in error because God works with each and every person through Jesus' teachings in a different way. How can one tell another without being subject to judging them, without being subject to telling them what they must do? Even Jesus didn't do that. Even Jesus left it up to the person when he was in the square with the woman who had been accused of committing adultery and was going to be stoned. After taking a while, he stood up and he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. He sets this up for us so that we know that we can't judge and shouldn't judge. But he gave everybody the opportunity to examine their hearts all differently. And they all did. And they all left. Then he said to the woman, where are your accusers? They've all left. Then go and sin no more is what he said. Now, what about abortion? This is the hard thing for people to understand. You must place yourself in the role of being in that place in time in life. And from the role and the teachings and the guidance, you must find that answer. You cannot look to the law. You cannot look to other Christians. You cannot look to other people that aren't where you are. Or you will subject them to judgment for them to tell you. You don't need to put your faith in man. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit, Jesus' teachings, God the Almighty, is there for you with the living word to help you to see. And only you can make that decision for that difficult life's purpose because only you are going to be held responsible for what you choose. That can't be transferred by penalties or prison terms or guilt or anything else, or shame or excommunication from the church. Those things aren't real. Excommunication can't even be done because the church is wherever two or more are gathered in his name and there is love. Excommunication, now that Jesus' work is done, can't even be done. You have to be strong enough to find that word, to knock on that door, to have that door answered, to find out what that word means, to follow so that you will know him by keeping his commandments, and then have the faith to make that answer based on what you're shown and given. Don't go to any other source. Don't put your faith in man. But also, do not keep those little ones from coming to him. Did you intend for that little one to come? Or was it a foul and evil deed that abused you and made you in that state? Consider those things. But don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody. You accept that you have to understand all those things and think about them when you're making that final decision. The fate for it will only be in your hands and in God's hands. Don't let anybody else make you think that legislation of morality is possible or needed. You will be the answerer in your circumstances and how you approach God through Jesus' teachings to make that decision. That's how you decide it. You can't do that in the law, can you? You can't do that in secular society. You can't do that for just a common man. Law is such a feeble attempt to try to explain the greater. Like science. Science seems so large. Our universe seems so large. But it's feeble. In its attempt to try to lock things down, all its power stripped away. Because those things can't be locked down. Those harder teachings can only be arrived at by the individual that's taking the journey. That's a faith-based thing. It can't be legislated in any way. And when you're there and you know, and you're there with the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus' teachings and understanding, hopefully you will have gotten there long enough along the road before you have to make a decision like that. And you'll make the right decision if you consult your heart and the Holy Spirit. And it might not be what you think. Don't fall into the trap of, well, it has to be this or else. Because that's man's colorization of how you should think. And even to the degree that you let that colorization affect you is the degree that you are putting your faith in man. We're told not to put our faith in man. So this difficult teaching for you today, I'm sure there's plenty of things already available that you can go and research. Has anybody said this? Has anybody made you see these things in this way? If you want to talk more about these types of difficult decisions, I'm willing to talk to you about them. Leave me a comment, send me an email, go to my Facebook page, address others, ask about what you'd like to talk about more. I hope to see you soon.